Hey guys, it's Real Crusades History, and today we're looking at five facts about the Knights Hospitaller or Hospitaller. Fact number one the roots of the Knights Hospitaller go back to the mid 11th century, even before the First Crusade. So, prior to the arrival of the conquering army of the First Crusade in Jerusalem in 1099, there was a Benedictine monastery called St. Mary Latin, which existed just southeast of the Church of the Holy Sepulcher. And this was, in fact, one of the only Latin institutions that existed in Jerusalem prior to the arrival of the First Crusaders. Associated with this monastery was a hospital dedicated to St. John, which was committed to caring for pilgrims and the poor since there were many uh, people in a difficult situation arriving in Jerusalem on a spiritual journey, often coming long distances from the Latin West. So the idea was to treat these poor pilgrims very well, to feed them very well, to care for them, to provide them with medical care um, in carrying out that order of Christ. Before 1099, this hospital was administered by a mysterious figure known only as Gerard, or William of Tyre, one of our important chroniclers of the uh, Kingdom of Jerusalem. Uh, he was Archbishop of, of Tyre. He names this uh, founding figure, or uh, leading figure in the hospital prior to the First Crusade as Gerard. We don't know much about him, uh, in, other than that he came uh, from either Italy or from Provence. Soon after the fall of Jerusalem, uh, St. Mary Latin, the monastery, was actually separated from the hospital, and the hospital was established as an important recipient of donations from the kings of Jerusalem and other important members of the nobility as well as the clergy. Um, the hospital had a very important function because with the establishment of the Kingdom of Jerusalem in the Crusader States, there were a lot of pilgrims now coming to visit the newly Latin-controlled Jerusalem. And so they needed care, you know, if they were poor or sick or just from the, the length of the journey could be very difficult for, for people. And so the king of Jerusalem wanted to ensure that people arriving in Jerusalem would be well cared for. And so the hospital received quite a bit of funding from the king. Now in 1113, uh, Pope Pascal II actually granted the brothers of the hospital official status as an order of the church. So they, they became a new order, the Hospitallers. They were now subject directly to the Pope and they had the right to elect their own leader. Fact number two, during the first decades of the Kingdom of Jerusalem, the Hospitaller brothers were not yet militarized. So the, the Knight Hospitaller as we think of them, um, the Crusading Knight you know, wearing black with the white cross, uh, stride his steed, this did not yet exist in the first couple of decades of the Kingdom of Jerusalem. At this point, the Hospitaller brothers were exclusively medical care providers and uh, providers of hospitality to pilgrims and the poor. However, as the order increased in wealth, because again, it was the object of much donation, and as the military needs of the Crusader states increased, the order of the hospital, the Hospitallers, adopted a military branch in which now brother knights were fully equipped for combat in the Crusades. Now this was inspired by the Templars, most likely. So the Templars kind of went from being a small group of, of associated uh, men who provided a, a military escort and military protection to pilgrims to becoming a professionalized military force, uh, a cavalry uh, knightly order. The Hospitallers sort of adopted that Templar model and themselves became a highly professionalized military force in the Kingdom of Jerusalem. So by the mid-12th century, the Hospitaller Knights were involved in virtually every campaign of the Kings of Jerusalem and uh, various other uh, rulers of the Crusader states, the Prince of Antioch, the uh, Count of Tripoli. And of course, the Hospitaller Knights are distinguished by their unique uh, garb of the black mantle, the black cloak, and the white cross. Fact number three, because of their increasing wealth, by the mid-12th century, 
The hospitallers were given charge of many important castles in the kingdom of Jerusalem and in other crusader states. So the hospitallers, much like the Templars, were, were a very wealthy organization, and they had the means to equip and fortify these powerful castles that were used in the border territories of the crusader states to defend territory against Muslim attack. In 1137, King Folk of Jerusalem gave the hospitallers the castle of Beit Gibran. Five years later, they received two of the main castles in the county of Tripoli. So the count of Tripoli granted them um, two important fortresses, and he also gave them the right to negotiate independently with neighboring Muslim powers. In 1142, the count of Tripoli gave the hospitallers what is probably their most famous castle, Croc de Chevalier, which is an absolutely amazing structure which can still be seen in Syria today. In 1186, they received the castle of Markab, which is, again, one of the largest and most powerful castles in Syria. So especially as the 12th century goes into the 13th century, and uh, the, the longer the Crusader states exist, the more important the military orders become to the maintenance of the various fortresses in Outremer, Outremer being the term used for the Crusader states in uh, Syria and Palestine. At this point, I would like to take a break just to say thanks to my newest supporters on Patreon. John pledged $10 monthly, Morgan pledged $5 monthly, Leonardo pledged $1 monthly, and Robert pledged $1 monthly. So thanks so much, guys. Fact number four, the Hospitallers were not only active in the Holy Land. Medieval Latin Christians considered Spain and Portugal to be very important theaters of crusade as well. And the Hospitallers held castles and participated in crusades against the Moors in Spain and Portugal. The Hospitallers in the Iberian Peninsula were primarily uh, in service to the King of Aragon and the King of Portugal, primarily because the central kingdom of Castile and Leon had its own regional military orders. But the Templars and Hospitallers were still active there, but they were much more active in Aragon and Portugal. In fact, Alfonso I of Aragon known as Alfonso the Battler, who was one of the first great crusading kings of Spain. When he died in 1134, he actually left his kingdom to the Templars, Hospitallers, and other orders. So this just shows the extent to which crusading ideology was taking hold in the Iberian Peninsula in the wake of the First Crusade. Um, now, Alfonso I of Aragon's heirs did not honor this wish, they did compensate the orders, but um, it's quite remarkable that Alfonso I was so committed to orders like the Templars and Hospitallers that he was willing to leave his kingdom to them. Raymond Berenger IV, the Count of Barcelona, left behind a description of how he viewed the Hospitallers' role in his territory. He said that they would strive for the exaltation of the Church of Christ the propagation of the faith, and the defeat and confounding of the Moorish race. In 1189, the Hospitallers participated in the Crusade of Silvis of King Sancho I of Portugal. The Hospitallers also played a very important role in the entourage of James I of Aragon, the great conquering king of Aragon, and they played uh, important roles in his Crusade of Majorca in the 1220s and his Crusade to conquer Valencia in the 1230s. Fact number five, the Hospitallers continued to exist long after the dissolution of the Knights Templar. And in fact, after the Templars were dissolved in the early 14th century, many former members of the Templars joined the Hospitallers. After the fall of the Holy Land, the Hospitallers eventually relocated to the island of Rhodes and then finally settled in Malta which they held for centuries between 1530 and 1798. They defeated an enormous operation by the Ottoman Turks in 1565 to conquer Malta. The Ottomans launched a massive campaign to conquer Malta and the Hospitallers defeated them soundly, although they were vastly outnumbered. So the Hospitallers continued to be in a very effective fighting force. Thanks very much for listening, guys. Hope you enjoyed this presentation. Don't forget to pick up a copy of my CD, Scatheless, featuring the song Templar. There's a link to that below. Thanks.
Oh, 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 oh,